Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey, and this is Daily A-Level Maths Tricky Question. Please do like the video if you enjoy this content, and do subscribe if you want to see more tricky questions up until your exams. And why did I pick this question? Well, I did because I've given it to students in the past, and pretty much everyone makes a mistake on the final question, and it's just generally quite tricky. So, uh, without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, this is a question 15, and it gives us a function, and it gives us uh, the um, uh, what the function is, and also the sketch, and it also gives us a domain, and it also tells us that we've got a maximum and a minimum, and we need to work out what the x-coordinates are, or we need to show that they are the solutions to this tan 2x equals root 2 equation. So, whenever I have a... Um, uh, a function which is a quotient, or it's a uh, fraction essentially, I can use the quotient rule. So I would write that u, the, the numerator, is equal to 4 sine 2x, and I would write that v, the denominator, is e root 2 x minus 1. I would then differentiate both of these with respect to x to get the derivative du, which is going to be well, we have a sine, which I know differentiates to cos, and the input is 2x, so that will stay the same, but what I need to do is take the input, differentiate it, which will give me 2, and then multiply it by the coefficient, so 2 times 4 is 8. And over here, if I want to differentiate an e function, again, the, well, the e functions always differentiate to themselves, but I need to take the input, which is root 2x minus 1, differentiate that, which will give me root 2, and times it by the coefficient. So root 2 comes out to the outside. Okay, now what I need to do is uh, use the quotient rule. Now the quotient rule states that the derivative function is equal to v, which is e root 2 x minus 1, multiplied by du, which is 8 cos 2x, minus u, which is 4 sine 2x, multiplied by dv, which is root 2 e to the root 2, root 2 x minus 1. Great. Ah, don't forget, all over v squared. All squared. And we want the derivative to equal 0. To find the turning points and in order for us to have a fraction equal to zero we only need the numerator to equal zero so i'm going to write the numerator out but i'm going to factorize it at the same time so what do they have in common well they've got a factor of uh, four here so i can take a four out they also both contain uh, e root 2x minus one so i can take that out And then the left-hand term, uh, I would need a 2 to times by the 4 to make the 8, and a cos 2x. And the right-hand term, I would need a root 2 multiplied by a sine 2x. Now, in order to make this function equal to 0, I need the two terms inside the bracket here to equal 0. Because an e function can never equal 0, so my 0 is going to come out of these brackets here. So I could write that cos, sorry, 2 cos 2x minus root 2 sine 2x needs to equal 0. And I can then add the root 2 sine 2x to the other side because now if I divide through by cos, I'm going to get the tan which I so desire. So I get root 2 sine over cos is equal to tan, so that'll be tan 2x. And dividing through by root 2 gives me this, and 2 over root 2 is the same as root 2. And I have that tan 2x is equal to root 2. Okay, the next part of the question asks me to work out the x coordinate of the minimum turning point of, the, uh, of these two particular equations. I'm going to grab some more space. 
Okay, so I'm going to need to uh, solve this equation to find uh, P and Q, and then I will transform that minimum point afterwards. So in order to solve this equation, I would take uh, the inverse of tan of both sides to get this, and that tells me that 2x is equal to, when I put that into my calculator, I get 0 0.955. And then top tip is that whenever you do tan to the minus 1, to get the second equation, uh, sorry, the second solution, you will take your first solution and add on pi, or you will do pi plus the first solution. And for cos, that's 2 pi minus, and for sine, that's pi minus. Really important you know those three. So to get the second solution, I will add on pi, which will give me 4.097. And then to find the two x values, I would divide through by 2 to get 0 0.478 and 2.048. Now you might ask, why are you working out 2? Well, it's just a habit. Whenever I solve a trick equation, I instantly, as soon as I've pressed tan to the minus 1, I'll always find the second solution and write it down because you never know where you need it. Okay, now I'm asked to work out what the x coordinate will be of the minimum point, which is this one here. So it's the second solution after a transformation of f of 2x. Now, f of 2x is a um, compression in the x axis. So the graph is going to look like this and that basically means that q the x coordinate is going to be halved so in order for me to get the answer for b part i i need to take the second solution which is the q1 and i will need to half it and that will give me 1.024 okay now part double i is a bit trickier because well first off the plus three all that does is move the graph up and that's going to change the y coordinate it won't affect the x's at all we're going to multiply the function by two which again is going to stretch the um, function up by a factor of two so that's again is not going to affect the x coordinate at all only the y but we are going to take the negative of the function and that will affect the x because that is a reflection in the x-axis. So ignoring the 3 and the 2 and just focusing on the reflection because that's the only thing which is going to affect the, um, uh, the x, we're going to get this shape graph. And the minimum point is now no longer at Q. The minimum point is over here at P. Or I should call it P dash because it's, um, it's a transformation. So it's now an image. So in order for us to work out what this minimum point is, we need to look at the first coordinate. And the first coordinate was this. And that hasn't changed. So it's still going to be 0 0.4. 7, 8, because again the 3 just moves it up which only affects the y and the 2 stretches it up which again only affects the y so the x hasn't been affected but all that's happened is we flipped over the minimum becoming the maximum and the maximum becoming the new minimum and we are done hope you enjoyed that like subscribe and tell me what you'd like me to do next bye for now